Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to begin with the new topic. And this time, this is a poem, No Men Are Foreign. This poem is written by famous poet James Carroll. Now, let me tell you about this poet. James Kirup was born in 1918 and died in 2009. He is a prolific writer, a translator, poet, and a travel writer. He was a fellow of the Royal Society of Literature in 1962. He wrote 30 books and his writings include autobiographies, novels and plays. His famous poetic work is The Drowned Sailor. This great writer received many awards. To mention a few, Atlantic Award for Literature from the Rockefeller Foundation. The second one, Japan Pen Club Prize for Poetry in 1965. These are some of his poetic works, The Submerged Village and Other Poems, The Caged Bird in Springtime, White Shadows, Black Shadows, Poems of Peace and War, The Body Servant, Poems of Exile, The Lonely Scarecrow, The Sense of the Visit, The House at Night, He Dreamed He Was a Butterfly. These are some of his famous plays, True Mystery of the Nativity, the Prince of Homburg and his autobiographies include The Wonder Child and Autobiography of Infancy, Sorrows, Passions and Alarms and Autobiography of Childhood. And third one is Me All Over. Now, before we begin the discussion on the poem, let me tell you about this poem in brief. In this poem, No Men Are Foreign, the poet imparts the noble message to all the human beings and appeals them to abstain from war and its violence. He observes the similarities and dissimilarities in cultures, traditions, habits and lifestyles of the people and notes that even if the people follow different faiths, different religions, they share many commonalities. They all breathe air, drink water, get the light from the sun, wear clothes and eat food and even reside on the same earth. He reminds the people that they are human beings and humanity stands above all differences existing in the form of traditions, customs, religions, and its orthodoxy and its systems which differentiate and separate the people from one another. So the question that arises here, do we really need such systems? Maybe the political one or maybe the religious one? which differentiate among the people. Now let us see what message the poet has to give. But before that, let me read the text of this poem and then we shall begin the discussion. No men are foreign. Remember, no men are strange. No country is foreign. Beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes like ours. The land our brothers walk upon, 
is earth like this in which we all shall lie. They too, aware of sun and air and water, are fed by peaceful harvests, but wars long winter stout. Their hands are earth, and their lines we read, a labor not different from our own. Remember, they have eyes like earth that wake or sleep, and strength that can be worn by love. In every land is common life that all can recognize and understand. Let us remember, whenever we are told to hate our brothers, it is ourselves that we shall dispossess, betray, condemn. Remember, we who take arms against each other, it is the human earth that we defile. Our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own. Remember, no men are foreign and no country strange. In this poem, the poet is giving the message of universal brotherhood. He believes in freedom, fraternity, equality and social justice. All the principles that our fathers have inculcated in our Indian constitution and that is the most cherished book that we all should follow. Here the poet is giving the message to those people who tell others to hate others in the name of religion, in the name of caste. And what is this message? Don't spread hatred. Hatred ultimately results in violence and violence ultimately destroys human life and pollutes this environment, this mother nature. Let us see what the poet has to say in this poem, No Men Are Foreign. No men are foreign, remember, no men are strange, no country is foreign. Here the poet is telling us, he is appealing to the people living everywhere in any corner of the globe that no men are strange. If you believe that people living in other countries are strange, so please remember they are not strange. If you believe that other countries are foreign, then please remember that no country is foreign. What does the poet mean by this? He means to say that people living in the entire globe are our brothers and sisters. So he's talking about his philosophy of brotherhood. Our forefathers to talk about this principle of non-violence. Gautam Buddha strongly believed in non-violence. Even Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, the architect of Indian constitution, imbibed the principle of freedom, fraternity, equality and social justice in our constitution. And what does it teach to us? It teaches us that all are equal. Therefore, we should not distinguish people, we should not separate them, we should not make them fight in the name of religion, in the name of caste, in the name of faith. Why? Because they are all human beings and we believe in humanity and humanity stands above all. The poet says, if you believe that people living in other countries are strange, then they are not. If you believe that other countries are your enemies, then they are not. The reason is, beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes. Now hear the word uniform. What is the meaning of the word uniform here? It is a distinctive set of clothes worn to identify somebody's occupation, affiliation or status. So if you see the soldiers in military, in army, in different countries, their uniforms are different. Similarly, people living in different parts 
of the globe their lifestyles are different their uniforms are different their cultures are different the languages which they speak they are different but beneath all uniforms a single body breathes the poet reminds here though our soldiers wear different clothes though we are all human beings a single body that breathes under this uniform is the body of a human being beneath all uniforms a single body breathes so we we must not forget that humanity is must we have to love human beings the poet is saying here that though we live in different countries different parts of the globe we follow different religions we different we follow different faiths or lifestyles are different we speak different languages but still the body which is there under all uniforms it is the body of a human being so don't think that the people living in other countries are different under their uniform the body that breathes it is the body of human being and those human beings are like us the land our brothers walk upon is earth like this don't think that the people living in other countries walk in heaven and hell no it is the same earth that we walk upon in which we all shall lie the poet says that this this is the world where we all take birth and when the time comes we make an exit so this body that comes into existence when we are born we are born on this planet we live our life we go through different phases of life and when we become old we all shall lie in the graveyard and that graveyard that graveyard is that graveyard is on the earth so earth is our mother we are the product we are the part of this nature this is what the poet is saying that we should not forget that we are a part of this nature a part and parcel of this nature let us summarize what the poet has to say in these four lines the poet says if you believe that people living in other countries are straight then they are not if you believe other countries are our enemies then please think about humanity and then you will realize that other countries are not our enemies though our uniforms are different a single body that breathes under those uniforms is the body of a human being and their soldiers look like our soldiers why because they have eyes legs feet head nose ears all the features that we have they too have the same features and the land our brothers walk upon is earth like this so the people living in other countries they walk upon this earth and we too walk upon this earth in which we all shall lie and this is the earth where we are born and we are going to die now let us move to the uh, next stanza they too aware of sun and air and water are fed by peaceful harvest but war's long winter starved the poet says they the word they here refers to the people living in other countries so those people living in other countries they are aware they are aware of what the light of the sun they are aware of the sunlight they are aware of the air that we breathe in and breathe out they are aware of the water that we drink the way they get light from the sun the same way we get the light from the sun the way we breathe the air in and out the same way the people living in other countries breathe the air in and out the way 
we drink water the same water these people drink in their countries and all these people who are aware of this natural phenomena they are fed by peaceful harvests so here peaceful harvests refers to the agriculture activities or farmers cultivate the land they sow the seeds they water it regularly and then we get the crops and when it is the right time for the farmers they cut the crops so we get this food from mother nature and we live a very happy life when there is no war when there is no violence around but wars long winter start but what happens when the war starts yes war ultimately destroys cities nations it kills thousands of the innocent people and those who at last survive in the war they do not get food to eat they do not get water to drink because everything is polluted and this is the violence that causes destruction their hands are ours and their lines we read a labor not different from our own the poet says we have hands they too have hands the way they work the same way we work their lines we read a labor not different from our own the way we work similarly they too work with their hands so their stories and our stories are not different why our stories and their stories are not different because we share many common things the poet says a labor not different from our own so when they feel happy we too feel happy so there is a mixture of happiness sadness there there are ups and downs in human life so this is everywhere this is everywhere in each and every part of the country that people go through different phases of their life so their pain is our pain their happiness is our happiness why we are all brothers and sisters and we believe in humanity that humanity stands above but when the violence takes place maybe in the form of war maybe in the form of religious differences caste differences that violence ultimately what does it do it causes destruction and then we must feel ashamed of ourselves why because we have created such situations such circumstances that we fail in maintaining peace even in one of the poems written by william blake yes that is london he talks about this that we have to create the egalitarian society where people are going to live peacefully no one will fight against the people will not fight against each other in the name of caste in the name of religion in the name of faiths they follow and he is a critic of the society industrialist society the royal society the the hegemony of the kings princes and the politicians at that time who did not pay attention to the people to the common people they had no sympathy for the common people and even the soldiers protected them while sacrificing their lives but even after that these royal people who ruled in those days in england felt no sympathy for the common people so the poet is william blake there talks about how we human beings have utterly failed in creating an egalitarian society where people will have faith in non violence where people will believe humanity and will think that humanity stands above all all are equal 
So there is no need to fight. Nobody is superior. Nobody is inferior. All are equal. All are in one line. Here, James Kiraf, to expresses the need that we have to create such a place where humanity will be there. People will follow humanity. They would believe in freedom, fraternity, equality and social justice. And if this, if this does not happen, then ultimately violence will take place. That violence would ultimately result in destruction. It would destroy the lives of people. It would not only destroy the lives of people, but it would also pollute Mother Nature in such an extent that we would have to pay. Our next generations would have to pay for it. So here the poet is saying that the people living in other countries, they are aware of the sun, air and water, the way we are aware. And they are fed by peaceful harvest. So we get food, good food, nutritious food, delicious, tasty food from this nature. But when the war takes place, yes, people suffer. It causes damage. And there is no one to control this damage. Because ultimately, the nuclear war, the destructive weapons used in war, cause destruction and that's why Gautam Buddha believed in the principle of non-violence even Prince Ashoka what did he realize after fighting the war when he saw that thousands of the innocent soldiers were killed on the battlefield he realized that war is of no use he owned the battle but what was its use and when he realized, he embraced Buddhism. And thereafter, we see that this religion, Buddhism, spread in India. So here the poet is talking about humanity. He says, if people in other countries suffer, their suffering is not different from ours. And even our suffering is not different from theirs. We are brothers and sisters. And we should have faith in humanity. Let us move to the third stanza. Remember, they have eyes like ours that wake or sleep and strain that can be owned by love. The poet says here that these people living in other countries, they have eyes the same way we have eyes. And when we sleep, we close our eyes the same way. When they sleep, they close their eyes. When they woke up, they open their eyes the same way. When we woke up, we open our eyes. So we share these commonalities. We are human beings. They have strength. They have power. And that power can only be owned by the principle of love, freedom, fraternity, equality, and social justice. We can, we can win the strength of the people in other countries. By love, not by hate, not by hatred, not by violence. So we can conquer the land, we can conquer the people by love and not by war, not by hatred, not by the religious differences, caste differences, class differences, gender differences that we find everywhere and this hegemony that is everywhere believes in inequality and wants to spread this everywhere. So the poet says that the people li living in the countries, they have eyes like ours. They have strength the way we have and their strength can be owned by love, not by hatred. In every land is common life that all can recognize and understand. We must have to see that what we have to see that in each country life is common. The way they drink water, the same way we drink water. And the way they eat the food, the same way we eat the food. The way we see the things, the same way they see the things. 
the way they breathe the air the same we breathe the air the way we enjoy the beauty of nature the same way they enjoy the beauty of the nature the way they get the food from mother nature similarly we get the food from mother nature so we are aware of this natural phenomena now let us move to the next part of the poem let us remember the poet is reminding the people across the globe whenever we are told to hate our brothers it is ourselves that we shall dispose betray contain remember we who take arms against each other the poet is saying when somebody tells you to hate others when somebody tells you to hate muslims when somebody tells you to hate christians when somebody tells you to hate people in china to hate people in bangladesh to hate people in america to hate people in japan then you must not follow such people because they say so they do so because they have their own selfish motives behind it they want you to fight against each other they want you to fight against the people in other countries so we have to remember that whenever we are told to hate our brothers it is ourselves that we shall dispossess betray and condemn when somebody tells us hit muslims when when somebody tells us hit christians dalits to try people at that time we forget that we are all equal and what do we do we spread hatred when we hate others we we dispossess ourselves we betray ourselves we condemn ourselves in a way we condemn our existence on this earth by forgetting that we are human beings and we should believe in humanity remember we who take arms against each other the poet is saying that we we have to remember that we fight against each other somewhere we have to stop it otherwise we are going to destroy ourselves with our own hands so we are digging our grave hard with our own hand and what message this will give to the coming generations that we will keep hating each other and this hatred yeah of course ultimately results due to religious differences and the orthodox ideology and the hegemony that some people want to maintain but by following this we are forgetting that these people who believe in hegemony they have their selfish motives they want to keep you fight against each other while they enjoy their lives the hegemony in even our own society makes people fight against each other in the name of caste but when these people distinguish you differentiate you in the name of caste and religion when it comes that you go to the temple you donate money do they say don't donate money of course not because they get that money and they enjoy it they have been enjoying for thousand centuries and we never realize that we believe in god and at again at the same time we believe in inequality that we follow in all the spheres of lives so the poet is reminding the people not here in india but everywhere is giving them a strong message and that message is the message of universal brotherhood even swami vivekananda believed in this principle of universal brotherhood and when he gave his speech in chicago the first sentence he uttered was my brothers and sisters so this feel this philosophy of life that people living in different countries are one people living in other nations they are one and do if we believe in freedom fraternity equality and social justice and universal brotherhood then do you think that we need fences do you think that we need borders that the nations across the globe have erected 
and there is a belief good fences make good neighbors do 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 we follow this philosophy of life where we need barriers fences and these barriers signify cultural differences religious differences national differences language differences so on and so on so the poet is saying if we hate people living in other countries people living in our own country then we are condemning ourselves we are betraying ourselves we are dispossessing ourselves so that's not a good idea it is the human earth that we defile our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own remember no men are foreign and no country strange here in this last stanza of the poem the poet is talking about war its destructive nature and how we pollute mother nature and again the poet ends the poem with the first line he repeats this remember no men are foreign and no country strange so he emphasizes what does he emphasize the need of universal brotherhood yeah while talking about universal brotherhood we forget what do we forget that in our own country we believe in caste system and we are not ready to forget our differences and we are not ready to stand about stand above these differences even ravindranath tagore in his poem where the mind is without fear talks about the fragmented society our society is fragmented and how can we create a paradise though ravindranath tagore talks of the place that he appeals the people to create but even today have we created a paradise on this earth no not it even today in india people believe in religious systems orthodoxy hegemony inequality existing in all the forms that is there in religion there are very few people in india who are rational scientific and those who believe that the religion that we have in india the religions that we have in india are orthodox they are critical of the system they condemn the system which teach people to hate their own brothers and sisters so we as the intellectuals we must have to condemn any system that believes in the division of the society in the name of caste in the name of religion in the name of faith so the religion that teach you to hate your brothers the religion that teach you to not allow dalit people in temples or at many other places that religion is not a religion that religion is a hell now if people go to temples i don't think that by visiting to the temple their their lives are going to change no if that was so god would have done so much for these people so we we have to somewhere realize that we have to become rational so the poet is giving us a warning here and what is that warning it is the human earth that we defile by following violence in the name of religion in the name of caste in the name of faith what do we do we spread hatred and by spreading this hatred it results into destruction violence so here the poet is saying when the war takes place what does the war do our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own the poet says when the war takes place in that war the use of destructive weapons nuclear weapons destructive weapons kill so many innocent people kill so many women children old men women it causes destruction it destroys nations it destroys people 
and ultimately what do we do we pollute we defile what do we defile our mother nature we defile air and this air is everywhere our own we forget that this air is our own this mother nature is our own and what do we do we cause destruction so when the war takes place the use of destructive weapons cause destruction it kills the people it destroys their properties and then the people suffer they don't get water to drink they don't get food to eat and here this is how war brings and happiness so here by using destructive weapons in war we are going to pollute mother nature we are going to pollute the air that is fresh everywhere and that is our own remember no man a foreign no country strange so the poet is giving the message that the people living in other countries they are not foreign they are not strange other countries are not our enemies they the people living in those countries they are our brothers and sisters so this is uh, what is the philosophy of universal brotherhood that the poet is talking about in the poem no man are foreign now let me move to the conclusion james kirap wants all the nations the governments and the intellectuals of the dire consequences of war and appeals them to abstain from war and its violence inequality in any form gives birth to violence and many social problems in society hence he requests the people to follow the fundamental principles of freedom fraternity and equality in all the spheres of their lives the poet presents the grim realities of war and says that the war's long winter starve the people and cause immense destruction to the humanity and the environment the poet gives the strong message of universal brotherhood and says that all the human beings are equal they are not strangers despite the fact that the people in different countries wear different clothes follow different religions speak different languages they share same physical mental and emotional experiences even our fate is one as we all take birth on this earth and we all die on the same planet the earth we pollute by means of war and its violence we defile our own earth and kill our own brothers and sisters who live in other countries and hence this way we believe in the principle of violence and become the cause of mass destruction to avoid all this we must regard all the people living everywhere in any part of the globe our brothers and sisters and cherish the universal principle of brotherhood towards one another then only we can save the humanity and this beautiful planet where we all decide so let us create a paradise where we are going to live happily forever and forever uh dear students uh, these are the questions that you have to read at your leisure and then yeah you have to write answers to these questions and you have to send it on my email id or on our google classroom and i will definitely go through your answers and will give you feedback thank you very much